Hello, welcome. Try this problem out and then press play when you're ready to solve it with me. Okay, so we've got a quadratic here and you could tell from some of the choices, if you look at them closely, you'll see that you've got imaginary numbers in two of the solutions. So this just tells me right away what I want to use is the quadratic formula and see if I'm getting complex roots. That's what these things are, they're complex numbers. Numbers with real parts and imaginary parts. Or if perhaps I'm getting one of these things here, which is a rational solution. So remember the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And in this case, what do we have? a is 2, b is 3, and c is 2, the constant. So we get negative 3 plus or minus b squared, which is 9, minus 4 times a times c, so 4 times 2 times 2, which is 16, over 2 times 2, which is 4. And that's going to become negative 3 plus or minus 9 minus 16, here's our imaginary part, is negative 7, taking the square root of negative 7 uh, over 4. So what happens to the square root of negative 7? Well, the square root of uh, negative 7 is equivalent to the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 7. This is the basic property of square roots, assuming both factors are not negative. And the square root of negative 1 is just i, and the square root of 7 can't be broken down any further. So that tells me this is negative 3 plus or minus i times the square root of 7 over 4. Now that, that's not a choice here. But what they're doing is they're dividing both parts of the numerator, negative 3, and i times the square root of 7 by 4. They're both being divided by 4. And you can see that this is one of those solutions right there. There could be a plus or minus there if they want to get both solutions. But they're just saying a solution, right? Not necessarily all of them. And that's the answer to this problem. All right, I hope that helped.